It is finally time for the unveil of the Modern Era pack. But before we get started, I really quickly want to plug the new Sprocket Community Replica Project Discord server. The invite link will be posted down in the description of every video I will be posting from now on. And if you want to contribute to these packs, make sure to join that Discord and go, of course, to read the rules and read the how to submit page. It's very important to you guys know how to submit because with the amount of submissions coming in, it's very important to stick to these rules. If a submission is not adhering to the rules, the submission will be deleted. So make sure to read the submission requirements and uh, yeah, start submitting. So here's uh, one of the early ones from some of the people that I invited to check on the server to make sure everything was okay before we get started. But yeah, uh, be sure to check that out. And uh, yeah, of course, the under 55 millimeter self-built Gunhauser Zana has already been showcased. So I'm just gonna give you a little tour of it around it like this. And if you want to see it in action, check my previous video. And uh, we're just going to go on to the ADATs right here real quick. And the ADATs is made by Nicer, one of our uh, longtime contributors to the packs. And of course, the ADATs is a um, anti-air vehicle with a uh, automatic gun on the top and eight missile launchers. This game, uh, we are using logs to kind of create those. We're just uh, creating as a unique effect. Sadly, there seems to be some issue with the transmissions for this one, so I'm really quickly gonna make it so that the engine won't be as upset when going through uh, shifting gears. There we go. That's gonna be better. And yeah, you got this automatic cannon on a Bradley chassis, which is uh, quite cool. Uh, of course, the, the missile launchers are not yet functional. The radar on the back is not yet functional, and so on. But you do got the cannon itself, which is quite nice to have, and it's a very pretty vehicle. Again, this one has been made by Nicer. Then next up is going to be the Arietta, also made by Nicer. So the Arietta is a modern main battle tank made by the Italians. And in a way, it is somewhat similar to a Challenger or a uh, Leopard 2. Of course, the hull is more Leopard 2-like and the turret is more Challenger-like. But to be honest, it is neither, and generally it is considered a more weakly protected tank. Its shells are definitely up to par compared to the other tanks, but generally the composite armor protection is considered to be lacking. Ability is roughly the same, but that's mostly because of the lighter weight tanks to aforementioned lower protection compared to the heavier main battle tanks of Germany and America. But, so, it is a main battle tank, so it is not exactly a weak vehicle, and it is definitely powerful with a very big gun right here. Again, this one was made by Nicer, and now we're moving over to the AS-90, which as far as I understand is a self propelled gun, but I am not sure from which nation. Uh, I was not uh, told much information about this one, but this one has been made by the uh, user Aru. And, uh, of course, there's a really big gun block in the front of the tank, but sadly, that does not rotate with the gun itself. We are still lacking options to attach weapons to the barrel itself. So if, if we could, like, uh, if the developer would add that feature, we would possibly be able to add parts to the, uh, the the gun itself, so they would up and down alongside of it. But right now, that's not yet a feature. Next on, we are going to the uh, B1 Centaur Draco. Once again, made by Nicer. But again, we already displayed this one in the previous one. So I'm just going to move on to the next bolt. Because there's a lot of builds in this pack. And I do not have time to showcase all of them otherwise. So this is the BMD-4, made by Nova. 
And the BMD is a prototype um, reconnaissance airdrop able vehicle made by the Soviet army. Well, Russian army, really, because it was uh, after the Cold War. And this one was made. And it is a very mobile and uh, powerful tank, honestly. Uh, despite being only, of course, a light tank and having just barely enough protection for uh, auto cannon fire, but not really anything else. It really adheres to the concept of having a tank is better than none. And because it's airdroppable, it means that it can really get onto any battlefield. And that is, of course, a very big advantage to have if you can drop a tank literally anywhere you wanted to, including on islands uh, with a beach assault, which, by the way, this thing can also do because it's amphibious. Or, let's say, mountainous terrain where normal tanks will not be able to climb up to certain plateaus. And uh, this one can be dropped there just by helicopter or transport plane, basically, and just get there and start, you know, using it as a firing position. And at that point, it really doesn't matter whether you have armor against main battle tanks, because you won't be facing any modern battle tanks, only uh, maybe some, some uh, infantry held anti-tank weapons, which this thing can handle if operated with armor packages. We got we got a BMP 3M Dragon, which, as far as I understand, was an attempt to turn the BMP 3 into a very different kind of fighting vehicle with a main gun and add-on armor. Uh, but it is not exactly a very good vehicle so far, and uh, as a prototype, it never really went anywhere. And this one was made by Kenshi2900. And yeah, it uh, does have some really nice details, such as the uh, fuel tanks as smoke launchers. But sadly, due to some significant engine issues, it has pretty much no mobility whatsoever. Moving on, we're going to go over to the Centauro 1120, which is the same exact hull as the Centauro uh, Draco. But actually, you know, with the actual Centauro turret. And uh, this one is actually very interesting. It's just, like up a uh, little raise in the, in the turret so that the gun can depress further. Which is still quite needed because the gun depression is really not that good on a tank like this. Well, tank. It's an armored car, technically speaking. But, yeah, this is an uh, armored car that is specifically designed to have like high mobility and big gun and it's, it's very similar in that regard to the BMD4 having no armor protection against anything heavier than uh, auto cannon fire and it adheres to that uh, better have some armored vehicle than no nothing at all concept mainly with its ability of mobility it can get to places where tanks cannot be because it's it's, it's raw speed it can deploy much faster and, uh, yeah, Centauro 2 is actually still in use for the by the Italian armor today. Pretty sure the uh, Centauro 1 was no longer used. Up next are the Centauro 2, I mean, it's Challenger 2, and uh, Challenger 2 TES by Excalibur 117. So, first is going to be the Maze model. So, this, of course, is the British main battle tank. And, uh, and it's still, again, being looked at being upgraded to this day. There's been a lot of concepts for modernizing the Challenger 2, but so far none of them have been uh, actually done. So we're going to have the Black Knights and stuff like those models, sort of 130mm main gun prototype, but none of those have been used. And compared to other main battle tanks, this thing has one of the heaviest and well-protected well turrets. But the hull protection and the mobility are generally considered lacking because of the uh, driver port weakness and, of course, the lower front plate being really big and being generally big weakness. And, yeah, the, the, gun, the, the engine generally just being weaker than the 1500 horsepower engines that the other countries are rocking. But even then, it's still a very much capable modern main battle tank. So here's the TES variant, which is basically the same except it's built for modern combat using uh, space armor on the back 
and composite armor screens on the side of the turret and hull. Uh, of course, this gives significantly more protection compared to anything else, but it is still a challenge to in every, every other regard. It does have the uh, of uh, the um, composite blocks on the front hull as well to again help with that lower front hull weak spot, and also has more space armor on the rear and the rear of turrets. Now that, we're going to move on away from British vehicles to Swedish vehicles of the CV-90s. There are two sets of CV-90s actually, uh, in total five different models. So this one is the 90105 made by Canadasm 101. Hope I am not butchering that name too much. And this is a um, well, more almost main battle tank style modification of the CV-90. The whole protection is still going to be lacking, but of course it has a very powerful main gun able of dealing with enemy armor very efficiently. And the CV-90 was this modular tank concept from the Swedish where they have a lot of different models of tank based on the same hull and only just plopping in and out different kind of turrets and maybe putting some armor package onto the hull but nothing too fancy there. And all in all it is just a very famous uh, infantry fighting vehicle, the CV-90. And it has a lot of different variants of them. So this is the 105, and again made by Canadesim 101. Then we have the 9120B2, made by Turtman Jones, which has a very similar hull with a much bigger 120mm gun. And uh, yeah, again, same protections on the hull and everything else, but the gun is just much bigger. Both the 120 and the 90, uh, the 105, are not too popular compared to the other variants, but again, there are still options offered by the Swedish military on export vehicles. Then we have the 9040A, which is a 40mm Bofors gun, and just rapid fire, and also features a pack of missiles. So, the B actually has the, the Bill missiles, but I think these ones are still tow missiles, if I recall correctly. And this is where the infantry vehicle is mainly known as for having the fold-out missile launcher. You can see the arm on the bottom there, where it folds back in to the hull when actually uh, on the move. But of course, that is not a feature in this game. And, uh, yeah, it's a very effective infantry fighting vehicle, and even though it only has a 40mm gun, it does carry APFS DS rounds with over 100mm of armor penetration, capable of dealing with other infantry fighting vehicles in general. Moving over from the A, we're gonna go to the B. So both these are made by Turpin Jones, very similar designs, but this, the B model has a little bit more frontal protection on the turret, with some composite screens. Everything else is pretty much identical to the A model, so yeah, nothing else is different there, but just a little bit more protection. But now we actually have the C, again made by Canadesim 101, and this one is entirely different. So they entirely for uh, just ditched the, the missile launchers, and when simply went with just the main gun, and they completely covered this thing in ERA in return for it be very well protected to the point where even it cannot penetrate its own frontal armor. And it is very protected against heat penetrators as well. So that is, again, also very good. Moving on from the CV-93, we got a K2 Black Panther. This one was being made by Nova. And this is one of the most impressive turrets that I've seen in quite a while, to be honest. It is... Uh, a very very big turret and uh, sadly of course the main uh, mantlet does not rotate with the gun so that's a bit of a bummer but this is of course the South Korean main battle tank and it is also often considered as one of the best definitely is very different from let's say a leopard uh, and you can definitely say that without for all the turrets. The sign is mostly meant to bounce shells when it hits the roof. 
so it gives it as the smallest possible frontal uh, profile that can actually be penetrated. And yeah, that is Decay 2. And we're going to now move on over to our Leopard 2 S6, which actually is not really changed at all since the original Pulse War Pack release. This one is uh, made by Excalibur 117 again. And of course, again, it, does, it has not yet changed since the original pack release. So if you want to see more about it, that is where you can do that. Then we are going over to M1128, otherwise known as the Striker. And sadly, due to being a uh, wheeled vehicle, we have to keep the sprocket very small in order to kind of make it look accurate. So as such, its mobility is not very good. But the one, uh, the striker does feature a very big 105 millimeter gun system on the top of this armored personnel carrier, which does account for more than you would think. To be honest, this gun is honestly extremely powerful, and you can see it on that as well from the recoil. Um, sadly, it doesn't really rotate with the gun itself, so it looks really weird when the gun is rotated like this. But it doesn't make it any less effective of a vehicle. Just as uh, the mount is the two cupolas are actually uh, right on the side of the turret right here, and the gun itself is auto loaded, so you only have a commander gunner in there while driver in the front of the hull. And that's it, Riet. And yeah, this one was made by Nova. And with that, we're going to continue to our Abrams tanks. So we got the Tusk variant, which we already kind of displayed uh, last time, which has the extra like combat uh, stuff on the top with the extra guns, gun on the front of the, <laughs> the uh, a gun on the gun itself as well. It really doesn't get much more American than that, to be honest. And, of course, they have a machine gun on the roof. And a light, another light machine gun for the loader as well. Add on armor packages on the sides. Stowage. Basically everything you can go for for a main battle tank. Has been added to this one. And this one actually does feature ERA on the side with these fuel tanks. Which, of course, are the sprocket implementation of them. And not the real world implementation of them. Yeah, this one was made by Capricog. Again, I really hope I'm not butchering your guys' names too much. And with that, we're going to move over to the, just the regular M1A2, which was made by the Flying Texan. And this one is much uh, like simpler in its design, but at the same time, it is much more advanced because of the paneling done to more accurately display a lot of the parts on this tank. A very, very beautiful engine deck as well. It makes it, of course, a more uh, like detailed design. As such, I felt the need to include both of them because they are definitely very, very different. This one actually has the, the sight on the top of the turret where the commander sight would be in the top right there. Also, accurate position for the gun to be. And its mobility is definitely up to a par for the main battle tank that it is. And yeah, that is the M1A2. Next up is the M3A3 Bradley, which was made by Nicer. And of course, this is a uh, infantry fighting vehicle that has been serving America for quite a long time, but is currently looking at being replaced by new models. And including those are stuff like the K-41, if I recall correctly the name, the infantry fighting vehicle that was only unveiled a few years ago by uh, Rhyme Metal Defense, and some other contractors as well. But the uh, Bradley has a uh, missile launcher on the side, again a fold-up one, and a lot of these add-on armor panels on the sides, so it's been modified throughout the years, and you can definitely see the similarities between this hull and one of the ADATs, but of course the ADAT does not have the add-on armor panels that this one has, and has a different turret. But all in all, they're pretty much identical in the hull. That, we're going to go to Object 640 Black Eagle, which I honestly don't know anything about. Uh, if anybody could tell me more about the design, would be very much welcome. 
This one was again made by Kenji2900, another prototype vehicle by his design. And yeah, again, it's because I can't really tell much about it. There's really much to it itself. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, go on to the next vehicle. And that would be the PLO-1. PLO-1 is a uh, Polish concept vehicle for a stealth tank. Which has basically just the least amount of radar footprints that you could possibly have on a tank. There or so is the idea. This very amazing design has been made by, once again, Nicer. He is uh, really uh, making a lot of tanks for this pack. And... Uh, yeah, sadly the tank doesn't elevate the gun too much, and also I got stuck on the trench, uh, sadly. But, yeah, of course it is only a prototype, uh, concept tank has not been produced in mass numbers yet. But it's definitely a very interesting design to look at, and it's definitely one of the most futuristic looking tanks in real life right now. Then we got a Puma IFE, which we have already shown off in the last video, so I'm just gonna do another just circle around and continue to the next page because there's really just too many builds to look at with this one. So next up, another build by Nicer, the Panzer Haubitzer 2000, which is the, of course the German self-propelled gun system with a uh, very big, I think it's 155 millimeter gun as well. And it is pretty fast in its fire rate, of course in real life, in game it has not been modified to give such a fast fire rate. But that is one of the most used self-propelled guns, also be used by, for example, the Netherlands and some other countries as well. Then we got the T-14 Armada, made by Excalibur 117. And, uh, yeah, this one I also kind of showed off already. Of course, this is the uh, unmanned turret tank the, of the future, kind of. Well, that... It's kind of wild the world when it was unveiled, and it is one of the most survivable vehicles currently in, well technically it's not really even in service because it's been produced only in very small numbers, but it is already does exist and is nigh indestructible because of all its add-on panels and ERA on the hull and uh, side hull. And the turret of course being unmanned, meaning that if it's hull down it is completely indestructible. It also has active protection system, which has mounted underneath the turret sides, as you can see right on the left and right. And overall, the entire turret is just electronics and uh, composite armor, uh, protecting the gun itself. And no uh, turret crew is actually in that turret. Yeah, that is the T-40 Namada. We only got a couple more tanks here. Uh, we got some T-72s, the 2S-19. This is a self-propelled gun variant, which I also showed off yesterday, so I'm just gonna, again, show you guys around it. And then go over to the B3, because both of these were made by Excalibur, so they both have the same hull. But this one's a little bit more interesting to talk to about. Uh, so, of course, it is one of the later models of T-72s, with a lot of extra ERA on the front of the turret right there. It's definitely very well protected. Spoke launchers on the sides, very nicely packaged like that. And overall, this is a very proper tank. And it was used alongside the T80 as some of the last designs, and the T90, I mean, as well, until they went over to the T14. Yeah, that's the T72 B3, because we also have the T90 here. Also made by Excalibur. So this one is actually in a way very similar to the T-72, but in a way just a modernized turret and hull. There's slightly different turret layout, but still having the add-on armors. They just have the stirrer designs, although this one's eyes are not glowing. They are meant to disrupt uh, infrared-based uh, guided missiles when fired at the tank, so they're in a way the passive active protection system. And yeah, very good mobility. As you would expect from a main battle tank. And a very interesting side for the gun. Almost feeling like uh, Quake's original rocket launcher to use the original. Very good, giving you uh, like a vibe like that. 
Up next is going to be the Type 10, which will be made by Canadesim 101. And this is the most modern main battle tank from the Japanese army. This one replaced the T-74 in service, as the Japanese, of course, used the two tanks in service rotation system, where uh, the new tank always faces all the old tank, uh, while the, 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 the tank that's not really new or old basically still stays in service until another new tank has been procured and it is this deemed as the old tank from between the two. So similarly how like the T Type 90 uh, replaced the previous models before the T74, uh, Type 74, this one replaced the Type 74 but not the T90. And this one was much lighter than the Type 90, which was mainly has to do with the Type 90 being too heavy to cross a lot of bridges in Japan, so this one kind of fixed that problem. In the meanwhile, it still will hold pretty much all of the protection and firepower and mobility that Type 90 had, so it was definitely a big improvement but it was also a lot more expensive. And as such, only a small amount of numbers were made by, uh, for, uh, for it, while the uh, Type 90 was producing much larger numbers. Next up is the Type 16, made by Nicer, a Japanese version based equivalent of basically the Centauro. This is, of course, a g armored uh, personal carrier, or uh, armored car, with a big gun on top of it. And... Once again, it has nowhere near the mobility that a uh, armored car should have because of the way sprocket handles top speed with very small sprocket wheels in the sides. Very sad. Can't really do anything about that issue until they allow us to just have an invisible sprocket wheel. Yeah, up next is going to be the Type 90 itself. This one was made by Mew Mew, and this was actually like a later variant of the Type 90. But for simplicity's sake, we just simply call it Type 90 in the pack. So the Type 90 is very reminiscent of a Leopard 2A4. Same square style stirrup with a lot of armor in front of it. As, of course, the armor that it used was best when faced head on by enemy shells instead of when uh, angled. So, as such, it will have a very flat front face. And yeah, it is a very mobile tank, 120mm gun, very had a very fast reload, even faster than it had in as in Sprocket right now, despite being such a big in shell size and only having a singular human loader. And overall, it's a very capable tank, but again, the biggest issue that it had was being too heavy for a lot of bridges in Japan. And that's definitely a big issue that you can't get around with on a place like Japan, where there are, of course, a lot of bridges. So yeah, it definitely had its big downside there, but I didn't withheld it from it being as combat cable as it is. And now onto some uh, Chinese vehicles, actually, with the VT4 made by Excalibur 117 being a uh, Chinese light tank with some cage arm on the back. And... Uh, Add on area array on the front. So this is very uh, similar in concept as to the BMD4 and the like, but it is definitely more well protected and it, it definitely balances more towards the actual main battle tanks. Also has lower mobility, but it's also just meant as a cheap main battle tank that uh, is you know still very much capable looking at the potential enemies that China could face, and especially more towards the Middle East. Uh, there's a lot of tanks there that are not too capable armor penetration, where this thing would still have very viable uh, protection against it, while being much cheaper to produce in larger quantities. So there's definitely a smart choice there with the VT4 uh, to keep its capabilities depending on its adversaries. But China does actually have a bunch of like higher protection vehicles with the the. ZTQ-15, another one of these light vehicles style tanks. Don't know too much about this one. Uh, it also was made by Excalibur-117. And it is another one of the high mobility, high protection tanks. And this one definitely feels more Labor 2A6, 2A7 style, but it's much less protected than those 
tanks. Which is still very interesting as a concept. So I want you to make, if you just made a cheap, very uh, large quantity producible tank instead of one of those very expensive made metal tanks. And of course we do have the ZDZ models 96 and 99As, which are both uh, kind of more um, Soviet inspired main metal tanks with the more compact turrets and more well protected uh, composite armor stuff on the front. These are definitely much heavier than the VT4 and uh, ZTQ15, but are uh, much heavier protected as they're in return. So China, of course, does have many different models of tanks in uh, service at the same time. This being the uh, 96A, being the pre uh, predecessor of the 99A, which will be looking very similar in design in a way, but just more modern overall, with more smoke launchers, more composite armor, more everything, basically, as well as an upgraded gun. Overall, very nice designs, and... Uh, yeah, with that, that is all we got for the Modern Era pack. Again, downloads are going to be down in the description below. The Discord server link will be in the down description below. And yeah, we are gonna definitely going to see more of these packs in the near future. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.